Last December, I went to Alaska. Now I know what you're thinking. December, Alaska. How many Speedos did you pack? <laughs> Jokes, it's actually quite cold. In fact, it's so cold, it's really hard to escape the thought of death. When temperatures are extreme, it goes from a physical experience to an emotional one. When it's a little cold or a little hot, you're uncomfortable. When it's really cold or really hot, it's unbearable. And you start to get the narrative, I can't last, I wasn't made for this. Anytime I'm in a new city, I go for a run. And it's because the novelty of taking this body in a pair of shoes and exploring a place like it's my own neighborhood is just a gift. And when I was in Alaska, it's so wild, it's so different, I wanted to go out and explore it, so I decided to go for a run. It was one degree, singular, with some wind chill and humidity that made it negative 14. So I found a trailhead, and the way Anchorage is just like Boulder is that the mountains are like on the city. And they're huge, and they're white, and they're imposing. You can feel their presence. But unlike Boulder, on the other side of it is the ocean. And it's a strange version where the sea can't freeze because of the salt, but it wants to because of the cold, and so it crashes into itself, and you get these crystals and these crags and these crevices. And I was there at 9.30 in the morning, but you're so far north that the sun is still rising. So these creamsicle beams are coming down, and they're lighting up all these crystals, and the ocean is glowing. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to do this, this eight mile out and back. And so for the first four miles down this trailhead, I see no one. And I don't mean like not many folk. I mean like zero human beings. And it snowed recently, so there's not even footprints. There were a couple of moose that had been strolling through the trail, and that was it. And when I got to the four mile mark and I turned around, I had the thought, if I were to slip, probably die. I don't even know if I can get my phone out, but even if I could, I don't think that would help. And all of a sudden, this awareness I had of the ocean and the nature and the footprints went entirely internal, and all I could think about was, please, please, please don't slip. And so now, like, I can feel my heart beating, I can feel where my clothing is touching my skin, I can feel where my shoes are gripping on the ice, I'm so completely drawn in. And for the next four miles, I still don't see anybody. And I just keep hoping, like, please, just let there be another person. Some sign that if something were to happen, that maybe, maybe someone would find me. I make it, thankfully, back to the trailhead. I get in my car, and I look in the mirror. My entire beard is covered in ice. There are crystals on my eyelashes. This, the water that was evaporating out of my shirt got caught between my jacket, and there was a layer of snow in the jacket never experienced anything like that. But as I was sitting in the car, I had this thought, which is that I just left a drawing. And so if someone else came to this trail, they would know that someone was here. Someone else was crazy enough to come out and run when it was negative 14 degrees, and that maybe someone is coming. Maybe there's another person. I'm gonna break the rules a tiny, tiny bit. Within the last week, there's a woman named Eliza Fletcher. And she went for a run at 4.30 in the morning in Memphis. And she was abducted, she was murdered. And all I can think about is there wasn't anyone there. There was no one else. And since then, so many women have come forward and they've explained what it feels like when they go to run. And it is not noticing the ocean, it is not noticing the trees, it is that deep fear of like, please, I don't wanna die. Please let there be somebody else. And I can't fix that. I can't run with every woman on earth as badly as I would love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> but I can keep drawing. And I can keep leaving footprints. And I can keep being the person that they saw on the trail and remembered someone is here. If I were to scream, if I were to yell, if something were to happen, maybe someone can help. 
And so for that reason, I'm never going to stop running.